right now it costs like a billion dollar to find one good drug. Why is that? It's because often people cannot predict whether a drug would be good or not until they actually try it on people. What if we could make a miniature version of you so that we know the drug works well or not before we get to trials or, or can make the process more efficient? So that's what we try to do. Our lab specializes in using those microfluidic devices to model parts of your body. This is one example of a microfluidic chip, as we would call it. Inside the Petri dish is a device with very small channels inside. And this would be the type of system where we might put living cells inside to mimic the blood vessel or lung or other parts of the body. It's a lot like cooking for a lot of, a lot of the devices we make. We first start out with designs for the microfluidic system, and then we make a computer drawing of something that models that, and then we will uh, do microfabrication of the designs based on those computer drawings. So this one is a device to, to make 3D cell culture. In conventional cell culture, the cells are grown at the bottom of a dish. So they're basically kind of flat and spread out. But if you think about your body, you're not flat in 2D. You're three-dimensional. So cells grown in these systems behave more like they would in the body. There are three application areas that we impact. One is drug testing, drug development. If we can make a better model of the body, we should be able to develop drugs better. A second application is making models of your body so that we understand the mechanism of disease better. And then the third area we have an impact is in actual disease treatment. So for, for example, our uh, microfluid mo models of the oviduct, we actually manipulate patient sperm, eggs, and embryos. And by providing those cells with a more physiologic environment, the cells are happier, produce better embryos, so that when they're implanted back into the mother, uh, they would have better pregnancy rates.